Hi everyone, thank you all for being here. We will start in like two minutes until the last people that are still coming in can take a seat. Hello. Yeah, big welcome to everyone. And thank you so much for having us. We are really excited to be here. Um, so today we will together try to untangle what the European film market is to like get a better understanding of behind the scenes of Edison and of Film Europe. And um, yeah, thank you. And we are the European Debate Initiative and it's in a collaboration with Edison. The European Debate Initiative is a platform where we organize events with professionals to, with the aim to get um, insight into their work and to make this knowledge accessible to everyone. So together with Ivan Musha, we will moderate this event. I'm Clara, Clara Mia Kaidi, and um, I will be focusing mainly on the questions on the program and the creation part. And, and uh, hello from me as well. Uh, my name is Ivan Mouchot, and uh, I will be focusing on more the economical operations of uh, Film Europe and Edison, with uh, extension on some influences on the European sphere of influence and, and culture. Um, back yeah. to Clara. Yes, and um, so the event will look like this. In the first part, we will ask some questions, and then we will open the floor to all your questions, so it will be half-half, so keep all your questions for the second part. And the event is also live, live streamed, so hello to everyone looking at us. <laughs> yes. And um, yes, we have the honor to have a very special guest in his uh, own, own cinema, own environment. So we are the guests, but you are our guest of honor, Dominique Ronietz. Thank you so much. And he's the creative director of Film Europe, but also of Edison and of two more cinemas in Bratislava, Edison and Film Europe Kino. Yes. Do you want to say a little bit more about yourself? Well, first of all, thank you guys for inviting me and this beautiful audience. Thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. I hope I'm not going to disappoint you two you guys and especially not my father who is sitting in the back row um, welcome in Edison I mean for some of you who haven't been here before this is the most beautiful cinema in the world according to us well, meaning me and my father um, yeah so I'm basically uh, Dominic I'm creative director I didn't give myself this uh, title it's been given to me because they just thought I'm just um, not okay and uh, always unsatisfied with all the creative stuff so 
this title I've been given. And yeah, so this is Edison Film Hub. It's a part of uh, Film Europe uh, family, which is a, a film distribution company based uh, here in Prague and also in Bratislava and Edison uh, it's been open. We're going to celebrate soon the fifth anniversary of the cinema and cafe, very important aspect of of our uh, business and programming. That we're going to talk more uh, later. And yeah, we get we have a lot of activities that I hope we're going to enjoy talking about. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much uh, for the introduction and uh, maybe to uh, dive into uh, straight away. Uh, you've mentioned, or we've mentioned, uh, that you're the creative director of Film Europe. Uh, perhaps two opening questions. You've touched upon it a little bit, but uh, what does a creative director mean uh, in your own uh, in your own way? And secondly, um, if you can expand on what is a distribution film company? What is Film Europe? Um, if you can introduce us uh, and for for likes like me what this company does and um, yeah what is the daily daily business well first of all i have no idea what the creative director means so you maybe you may tell me after this discussion if you get some kind of a sense what it might mean uh film distribution the alchemy of film distribution we are i think we're very unique uh, with all the humbleness uh, i must say we're first of all family business so as i mentioned my father is the is the ceo and i'm something under his ceoing uh what do we do we buy films we buy film rights um for czech republic and slovakia uh as other distribution companies do as well um we buy all rights meaning that we're buying uh films for uh cinemas festivals, um, VOD, TV, Blu-rays and DVDs. We don't buy any any air, airlines or, or cruises. Uh, and so we're, we're basically free to do almost whatever we wish for with the films for certain amount of time. So it's not uh, forever that we buy those films. It's usually for uh, several years. And Edison, we open the Edison as a space to really play around with the films because the films, the type of films that we're buying are, uh, in a very simple sense, uh, are available. So those are not films made by major Hollywood uh, studios, but mainly by uh, in independent um, European or Asian or, or even American uh, productions. Yeah, you just stumbled upon my next question already because you said you have Edison to play around, but you don't just have Edison, but three cinemas in total. And uh, why is it so important for you to have this film distribution company and also the cinemas? Because usually it's two very distinct businesses. So cinemas are quite dependent on film distribution companies and vice versa. But it's rare that one plays or like one company has both. Why, why the cinemas? Uh, well, it's mainly because of the of of the product. I mean, I, uh, with all the with all the respect that we, it's in the end the film is product that it has to be um, sold because we're buying the rights and we want to earn some money at least to to get the money back what we spend on the film. And the film that we're buying are uh, art house films. I mean, I, I don't really like this this term, but we have to categorize it somehow. So it's art house. It's a it's a festival film. It's it's a niche film. So it's not the film for the wider audience as the Hollywood blockbusters are. Um, so this is this is the already the limitation that we have. I mean, as a film Europe in Slovakia and, and Czechia, we have a. Uh, one percent of the of the market share and the, the general i mean the most of it it's eaten by by like i said uh, big franchises um so in order to survive and even progress we have to di diversify so we have this we have this all all rights so as i said cinemas festivals um tv vod so we created for each platform our um own platform, our, our own product system, space, uh, physical or online, uh, which means that we're in control. 
Um, so we are spending money on these activities, but uh, if it is success, it's our success. It's, if it is fail, it's our fail. And and very specific reason why we have the Edison here, it's very specific for uh, for Prague or even for Bratislava. Some of the some of the uh, art house or independent cinemas are are run or owned by uh, film distributors. So basically, our competitors. So specifically here in Prague, uh, for distrib distributor like us, it's necessity to have a film in order to have the film uh, being screened. Okay. I have answered yes. your question. No, yeah, you definitely did, and. Um, Especially if you're talking now about the competition, like how do you, yeah, how do you curate this program? How do you choose the films? Like you mentioned film festivals as well. Like how does the process work of you watching a film until it's screened here in the cinema? It's 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 a long process. I mean, it could be long. It could be super short. I mean, uh, the longer scenario is that we. Uh, there are sales agents um, who are um, most of the time are, are at the festivals. I mean, we could contact them outside the festivals, but most of the time during the uh, Cannes and Berlin, they're doing uh, uh, announcements. Uh, so the new films that are either uh, in production, meaning that they have they just started filming or they even haven't started filming, they have only the script. Sometimes they don't even have a script, they have only a director or the cast uh, attached. I mean, for example, um, uh, the Promise Land, the recent film with uh, Mats Mikkelsen. I think we acquired uh, two or even three years ago, and without even reading a, a script, we just knew the the director, the obviously the actor, and we kind of bet. I mean, it's always a, a betting, so it's 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 a lottery because you never know how it's gonna turn out. Um, so this is kind of an extreme example that we are buying in advance, not just us, but our. But uh, is this well? then the smartest, like <laughs> in the competition wise, is it the smartest to have it as quick as possible? So even before the film is done, like with the basic information so that you're earlier than well, your competitors? The alchemy is that you, you, you can't tell. You never know if it's going to turn out to be a, you know, successful film or, or not. So yeah, perhaps an um, ongoing uh, question on this. Um, in terms of the rights, uh, you've mentioned the promised land. Um, how important is it for Film Europe to own the film first? Uh, is it the first sort of mover advantage in terms of that uh, you then sell the rights to other production or your competition? How important is it for Film, uh, film Europe to have that? Because no, we we basically because I mean we're renting the film in in, in a way for long period for but for all the rights so basically when it comes to our uh, territories like uh, Czech Republic and Slovakia we can do whatever we want to do with the film so we can uh, give it to for obviously for a certain fee to the to the festival so that's usually the first uh, uh, stage when the, the audience get to see the film so either big ones or or smaller ones uh, so there is always some certain certain type of uh, negotiation for what type of uh, fee would we would uh, give them uh, the film for I mean they usually screen the film only for uh, one screening or two screenings but then it's really it's our respons responsibility and decision what we do uh, with the film. So even even if the producers or uh, uh, sales agents are approached by the festivals, I mean not all of them, but but most of them approach us as a, as owners of the rights for the specific regions, and they they give us a, a information that you know this is your uh, territory, you handle this festival. Yeah, and it seems like film festivals are like the most or like almost the most crucial part for you and uh, in a way for you as a renter for the films but also for you to find the films for your own company like is there a way around them or is are they as important as it seems now I, I, I just gonna come back to uh, the ways we uh, and, I, and I come okay, back to sure. uh, your question because it leads to that question uh, the the second way how we find the films are at the festivals so or at the big festivals, so I'm I'm talking about uh, Cannes, which is going to be uh, uh, which is going to be soon. Uh, Berlin it took place a few months ago, and then uh, Venice uh, during August and September. So these these are the the the, the 
the, the A festivals, um, the, the big three uh, that are really have the reputation for showing the, uh, yeah, I don't like this term, but the best films from the art house scene, but also from the, from the mainstream. And the other important uh, uh, thing is to say that the Cannes and, and, and Berlin Festival, Berlin Film Festival, they have uh, their own market. Uh, so they have the, 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 the platform for the industry, for the sellers and the, and the buyers when, when they present the films, uh, either in pre-production or films that are, that are taking part at the festivals. And why the festivals are so important? Because I mean, they're, first of all, the whole world is on that specific day of that premiere is looking at that festival, on at that film, the director, and so they're creating the, the buzz. And if the film is good, they're creating the even bigger uh, bubble, and uh, the buyers like us are interested because that, that this bubble is creating the uh, international uh, marketing, which spreads across the world, obviously, because we as a, as a distributor, local distributor, we don't have a really a strength to introduce the film uh, without this international uh, marketing. So there is a great demand if the film is successful at the festival and everyone is writing about it, that, you know, that, that's when the fight uh, uh, begins. Um, and then if we, if we get a film, then, we, it's, then it's, it's, it's on us what we do uh, in our territories. And what was the question again? <laughs> is there a way around them? Like how important are film festivals? And then there are local film festivals, obviously for... Um, and some uh, that you're also organizing and hosting yourself? Yeah, that's true, but but really, I mean, we, we don't even want to, you know, it's our thing and there are other festivals like uh, Karlo Ivari or uh, Letni Film of Ashkola, which is also, a, um, let's say, nationwide uh, uh, platform. Uh, but also when we talk about films that we have, which is niche uh, film, there is always, always the danger if we show it at, uh, for example, at Carlo Ivari, that all of our audience will see the film. Um, and then we kind of are losing uh, our fuel as a, as a distributor. But, but the festivals, I mean, the, the festivals are, are packaging the film. So they're putting them together and presenting them. This is this is the films you should you should see. That this is the films you should talk about and and and, and know. So the strength is 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 almost big as the international ones uh, to have a successful launch the, uh, of the film at the local film festivals. I mean, yeah. And you, you mentioned our festivals like uh, uh, showcases of the the films from Berlin, Venice, and Cannes, which is called B2 B2 Cannes. And then Scandi, uh, which is the showcase of the Scandinavian cinema. And in Slovakia, we have a Creme de la Creme, which is the, the showcase of the French film festival. So, so the f it's really necessity and important for these type of films to put them into uh, a specific context and, 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 and the packaging. Because otherwise, they're not as strong, strong in, on, on their own when they're led to the cinemas just to attract the audience. It's quite difficult. I am gonna uh, relate to the question, or uh, when you were describing the market of the film, uh, I think that's absolutely interesting, incredible, and I cannot imagine how it works. But I think it sort of looks like a stock market or some uh, market with uh, potatoes or something. And yeah, that's what I thought when I was little, because I mean, my my dad would go to the film markets and they call me <laughs> markets, and the only market I would know is where we get vegetables from. <laughs> And, and that's how I imagine, but it's it's actually not that different. I mean, in the in the visual sense, I mean, you have like the this whole this these huge holes where you have this this stands, and they're basically you know sellers, sales agents who are you know uh, uh, covered with the posters and and TVs with the trailers, and they basically trying to sell the films in the uh, same way as they try to sell potatoes. Maybe. If you can get an example, as you said, uh, the bigger the bubble, the bigger the bus, uh, it's the more difficult to get the movie, I imagine. What was, perhaps, yeah, if, you, if it's not an NDA thing, what was a really difficult movie to get or something that was, like, you knew it's gonna uh, blast and it was difficult to, to take? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the first one that, I mean, I was quite, upset that we didn't get it but I mean from then on we we got you we got used to it because they are I mean I checked today that how many films were uh, released or films um, so yeah if we lose one film I mean you, you know you have another 9,000 
900 films. So, so um, yeah, I think the first one that that I was really disappointed was a uh, was a uh, uh, Loro by uh, Sorrentino about the uh, Berlusconi because we distributed the, all the previous uh, Sorrentino films and we basically distributed Sorrentino before he was cool. Um, and this was quite a disappointment, but the film did, didn't do that well in the end. I mean, yeah, we, we read the f script. I was, I was, because the Sorrentino is a great script writer and, 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 and I loved it immediately and, and we fought for it and we really gave a great offer, but, but was not um, accepted. But in the end, yeah, I was not that disappointed actually. Yeah, maybe then it was maybe even for the best, but what is a positive example, like other way around where you didn't expect it and then it got huge and you were very glad that you got the rights. Well, the great beauty, for example, but I was not involved in our company as, as much as I am now, but that was, that was a very unexpected uh, success. I mean, even without any, any, any marketing, but there was kind of a, um, not very loud, but very continuous uh, international buzz about the films. And, and, and I know from my, from my father that when he saw, screened the films with other buyers, he was, he was one of the few that actually liked the film and, and trusted the film. I mean, the other example is, is, is for sure uh, another round with, with Mads Mikkelsen, beloved actor uh, world widely, um, uh, which did extremely well. Um, uh, well, extremely well in, in our sense, in our 1% uh, market share sense. But uh, also worldwide with the Worldwide, yeah, exactly. Festivals. So, But it, it, it goes very unlucky because it premiered just before uh, the COVID uh, closed all the the cinemas and and we premiered the film literally uh, two days uh, but relaxed a bit. Um, it was a number one film in Slovak cinemas, which never happened to us, and I think will never happen in the future. But it was a it was a good good kind of a uh, it was very strategic, very luckily strategic film uh, in this period. Yeah, and congratulations on that. And um, yeah, generally, when you have this kind of film, do you directly like? pre-curated in a program like do you choose films where you are like oh this would be perfect in the Scandi film festival or the middle eastern film festival do you choose in that way also strategically in a combination or is it first the film like the importance that the film really seems like a good and valuable film and then you afterwards choose of how to how to curate it in the program it's both. I think most of the time we're um, looking at the films through the perspective of our own uh, festivals or events or even uh, this Edison space. So we kind of created uh, events or minifests or stuff like this uh, specifically for this um, for this space. So, for example, like you mentioned, uh, Alkamar, the the festival of um, of the, the Middle Eastern Festival and Northern Africa Festival of uh, films, uh, music, and, and the food. We we had our first edition uh, last year, and it went really well. And now we're looking at the films to to buy specifically for this um, this festival because last year edition it was very much uh, recycling recycling the the films we had um, in our uh, film library, uh, but now we're we're buying. Film, so it's it's a it's a commitment. It's a new commitment because we're already buying uh, uh, for Scandi and B2Can, which means that it's uh, between ten to fifteen films. So we're buying a lot because we're trying to 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 merge the quality with with quantity, which is even even more difficult. And and uh, the price of the of the art house cinema is rising like a like the petrol. So it's 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 really difficult, and the competition obviously. And and yeah, it's it's. It's it's tough and very dynamic, but but like I mentioned, Edison. So it's this is our jewel. We're like I said, we're playing around. It's it's with all the all the seriousness and respect because we're taking care of every film we have here. We kind of created uh, its own life. So it's it's part of the film Europe, but at the same time, it's not. It's living its own uh, independent life. Yeah, and here you have such a closer. Um connection with the audience as well so you directly you can see way more what the reactions are and what the outcome is of selecting a certain film over another exactly i mean this is a very 
first time that we're actually having a direct contact with our audience. So it's not like we're uh, selling uh, our TV channels. We also, by the way, have our own TV channels called uh, Film Europe and Film Europe uh, Plus, which is mainly a business to business type of <laughs> business. And this is this is more business to customers. So it's very, you know, it's great responsibility to not disappoint on the daily basis anyone, literally. Yeah, um, super interesting again. Um, I was just wondering when you were, I mean, there was the conversation about the uh, uh, festival that you yourself uh, organized, such as the overview of the Scandinavian films, B2 Khan, uh, Al um, how, um How do you sort of plan those events and, and the films that you uh, play? Because um, to me, uh, many times I was here uh, sitting and watching a film from uh, from Middle East and uh, as a person who've never been in the Middle East, uh, they created a lot of impact on me and uh, how I think about that specific region, even uh, the Druk and connections between uh, Danish culture and Czech culture or Slovak culture. Um, th is this something that you take into account or how, how do you go about this? Well, I start with uh, the Alkamara, with uh, the youngest out of the all the festivals we have. This was actually our idea. Well, it was the idea of our colleague, uh, Ryan Keating, who has uh, his own uh, cycle here every every Monday. It's 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 for uh, uh, expats. It's English-friendly screenings. And um, he came out with this idea that, you know, he's really interested in the Middle Eastern and Northern African um, culture and films. And he wanted to expand it to the, kind of create a, this this Alkamar uh, experience. So we called up all these um, markets and really turned into the very complex uh, type of event with using all the senses. So not just the cinema, but creating the um, more complex experience. And the experience is very different, diff uh, very important uh, world uh, for me. I just try to, to, to keep thinking about everything we do in terms of a uh, experience specifically uh, specifically here um, so Al Alkamar yeah it's a great experience to really bringing different community and connecting them so really engage with the with the with the people who are living here for from Iran uh, from Egypt from from Iraq so it was you know they, they brought their kind of uh, um, experiences and and uh, products and, and that obviously attracted uh, um, other audiences as well. So it's really kind of creating space for different um, communi communities and, and creating a safe and, and accommodative uh, environment. And then the other uh, festivals you mentioned, the Scandi and the B2Can, these are the, the oldest ones. Um, I mean, these came very naturally because we started buying from uh, these three uh, festivals and we didn't have any other uh, platform uh, to br present these films. So that's how the B2Can, B2Can came, came along. And then obviously uh, uh, Scandi, which is one of, one of our most successful uh, uh, festival, which is really um, uh, building on the popularity of uh, of the Scandinavian culture in general. So it's not about not only about the you know great uh, uh, black dark dark comedies uh, that you expect with the with the beautiful uh, sceneries, but it's it's also linked with uh, other kind of uh, disciplines like uh, literature, uh, music, architecture, and and sort of audiences they expect these kind of features in these movies and you know when we have this 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 space Edison we can we can we can invite them we can invite people from different uh, um, industries and and talk about you know different aspects in relation to to film so Scandi is very uh, playful and engaging and you know it gains a lot of interest from uh, different um, interests yeah and how Ivan was saying that it was the first or like that he hasn't been to the Middle East, but through the films here, he discovered it for his, for himself. And I'm sure he's not the only one having this eye-opening moments here. And uh, are you aware of the, like also cultural importance of cinemas and the program curation in them? I mean, I, to be perfectly honest, we're not 
as or original as you as you may think. I mean, <laughs> these films that you see here, we, I mean, they are picked um, by uh, by uh, artistic directors of mainly Cannes, Venice, and Berlin. I mean, those are is a quite a number of films because at each festival, the main competition has uh, 20 films, then the other section has a uh, 20, 20, so it's around 52 to 60 films that they are we're picking from. And uh, and uh, the, the Middle Eastern, the North African, the Asian films are quite prominent at these festivals. And they're like, these territories are sending the best what they could offer. Um, and obviously if there is kind of a, um, you know, potential, you know, for the wider audience here, uh, we buy them and we present them, present, pre present them and, and premiere, premiere them. And I'm glad that, you know, Ryan, that he found a kind of a home for these films outside um, the outside of these our traditional um, festivals like 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 B two can and and the the rest of the stuff you 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 described the uh, kind of creating the bridges and uh, the the new kind of perspectives that these films offers that's 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 something that gives us a um, a kind of alibi what what to kind of talk about and kind of guide us how we find the 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 content for 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 this film form i mean it's a good alibi but it also gets more and more important i mean considering also the elections in slovakia um with that just had um that just happened like it's important to have these spaces and <laughs> films that show different worlds that yeah well um we're at the moment we're building uh, a, a new edison in bratislava um but we to be honest we haven't really uh we haven't had really worked with the audiences like here because we have an amazing team that really takes care of uh you know on the daily aspects and mainly the program so you know i, I can come up with a with the idea but the realization is is the the other aspects and we kind of after almost five years we created this this team of great people who can you know take the product and and make it make it make it happen um so at the moment i mean in slovakia it's going to be uh, uh s especially important especially for us even within this this small community because we're not gonna kind of a change uh mind of half of the population um uh who think otherwise um but uh especially now it's 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 very important to create these safe spaces for um <laughs> different cultures because we're at the moment where there is a the, the 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 nationwide kind of uh, uh, or the the government kind of perspective on this is very uh, limited and limited only uh, to uh, to kind of present or uh, support only a purely uh, Slovak based um, art or culture. Yeah, uh, maybe before uh, opening the platform to you to ask your questions uh, on Dominic and uh, uh, film distribution or Edison, um, a question that uh, related to uh, what Clara was saying about perhaps Slovak uh, situation and the perspectives. Um, I think in Czech Republic, as, uh, as well as for Slovakia, uh, the role of uh, funds and, and, and sort of dependency of uh, either European or state or city funds to f channeling and providing culture is very big and I think with Slovakia this is something that really came up with cutting some funds for the galleries. Um, I was wondering you uh, as far as I know are not uh, really tied to any funds you're as independent as it could be um, Maybe you can elaborate on that and sort of, uh, yeah, uh, add whether or what kind of space does this give to you or uh, what possibilities are emerging from not being tied to any fund and if this is a choice that you made uh, early on or is it something that uh, might change in the future? Well, we, we are very fortunate in a way, but also it brings a great you know responsibility to you know to to make money to to pay our colleagues on the monthly uh, basis from the money that we earn i mean the diversification that i mentioned it's that's why we're doing it so we're kind of spreading uh the wings and we can kind of uh, find the money on on different uh platforms i mean in in, in general uh our 
um, uh, our income or cash flow, uh, we have only 10% uh, uh, public donation, not donation, public public funds, mainly for from uh, European Union, from the from the media uh, program, which is supporting um, uh, distribution. So um, when the films is is sold, I think to more than uh, seven countries or sev several countries, they're eligible uh, for the for the European uh, media funding. But like I said, in our perspective, is 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 roughly around um, ten percent of the income. So the rest we have to earn it by ourselves. So earn it uh, via uh, TVs, via Film Europe and Film Europe Plus, via uh, this beautiful space, and and in future uh, in Bratislava space. Uh, and also in distribution, so you know, not we're not screening our films at this cinema only, but we're trying to uh, convince uh, exhibitors uh, across the uh, Czechia and Slovakia to to program our films, which is turning to be more and more uh, difficult because I mean, you know, when you send it to the smaller city and and only one um, audience shows up, then you know the exhibitor might not. Uh, program the the film again, so kind of we have to create a, obviously marketing and PR and so on. So it's a it's a complex uh, um, operation, but but the, the dynamic we set it up after the COVID ended. It's 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 I think it's um, it's going in the right direction, uh, but obviously other companies uh, might not be as fortunate as as as. We are, even though I mean it's it's super tough uh, what we're doing because we're trying to do everything and uh, at the same time and 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 trying to look cool uh, and and you know and and confident. I mean we are, but it's it's super difficult. But other companies are not fortunate because they're kind of tied to the to the public uh, funding, uh, not entirely, but the majority of the income comes from uh, from there, which turns to be quite tricky, especially in the case of Slovakia, where there is a danger that um, uh, you know, films like, like that we distribute, uh, you know, could be, could be, I'm not, they are, but could be in danger or other, other art disciplines like galleries or, or um, concerts or whatever. Um, um, it's, it's, it's quite ironic that, you know, people who, uh, or the organization or, or activities, who were tied with the uh, public money were calling themselves in independent, but now it kind of turns other way round that the more uh, uh, private and more uh, uh, business oriented you are, that's the actual uh, independence. It's a curse as well, but more independent as well. Curse in the sense that you are, you know, you're responsible for yourselves and for your employees as well and what you earn you pay um so it's not like you know you will you, you know you get you, you have you know the bunch of the, the the cash lands on you on the beginning of the year and you know that you know you don't have to really try hard and organize uh uh, uh events and pack cinemas on a daily basis because i mean that's what we do we're in the one continuous roller coaster i mean yesterday we we had a Hilmar uh, Otson, uh, the Icelandic director uh, who came to present um, uh, his film, uh, Driving Mum. Uh, so he flew from Iceland today. He's already in Bratislava. He's going to have a Q&A uh, with me tomorrow. And then he, he's traveling uh, uh, to Košice. But I mean, I, I'm not going to steal it for ourselves. It was actually an uh, 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 idea of the exhibitors from from Košice, from Kino Usmo. They, I mean, it's our film. I mean, this, this is a very uh, beautiful example how the how the how the uh, public funding and 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 uh, private business could cooperate. So this example shows that Kino Usmo, Kino Smile in 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 translation, so Cinema Smile uh, in Košice. They they got funding to to kind of give this uh, director uh, a residency. Um, and they know that we are distributing this film, and they approached us if we would be interested to have uh, a director before he goes to to Košice to do his residency and his master class over there. And they also o o only approached us in relation to to Bratislava. I was like, no, I mean, I'm always very maximalistic, and 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 I want everything. So I was like, 
let's let's give him have him first in Prague, then go to Bratislava. And he was so kind and easygoing that he said uh, yes. So, and now when it comes to money, I mean, we split the expenses with 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 Kinosmo. You know, we pay half, they pay half, and and that's kind of a healthy uh, collaboration. Thank you. Uh, once again, then, uh, we are sort of opening up the floor for, for you. Uh, anyone who has... Yeah, well then, that was quick. Go ahead, please. Okay, I have uh, two questions to start. I have some more, uh, if needed. Okay. Uh, first, uh, regarding uh, the acquisition. You mentioned the role of uh, the festivals. You also named some numbers of how many uh, films are produced, how many are uh, in the festivals. So there is some kind of discrepancy. So I can understand that most of the time it's you hunting after some big names and big films. Uh, is it also the other way around that the producers approach you trying to sell uh, movies? Because also there is some kind of a bias uh, in terms of selection of films uh, for the festivals. And the second question then would be, uh, seeing the last five years uh, on the distribution side, what are the main channels and what do you see as a trend, not only uh, at the beginning with the uh, pandemic, but also what do you see as a trend now, as for the revenues or number of, of uh, your public? Thank you. Great questions, both. Uh, like, you sound like an insider and you know, I know you that you're, you're our regular, so thank you so much for that and great questions. Uh, if if we're if okay, um, it's very much at the moment comes down to what we can afford when it comes to acquisition and what's available and how good the relationship between us and the sales agent is. It's only these three pillars. I mean, my my dad could uh, uh, add some some more, but this is from my uh, uh, perspective. I mean, let's take. Uh, Cannes Film Festival, which announced its main competition recently, uh, half of the films from, I think, around 20 are sold out. And the second half, uh, before the festival ends, will be sold as well to the distributors like us or to the uh, studios or streamers or whoever. So the environment is becoming very uh, tight and, and quite difficult to uh, um, be there first and offer as much as we can because obviously the bubble it's it's also responsible for the high prices during the festival so it's really a, a bidding right bidding war so that that sometimes comes to um, us as well if if we're approached by producer that's a bad sign to be honest we don't like to be approached by producers because they're too attached to their films uh, we only deal with the uh, sales agents. I mean, we 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 get uh, uh, we are we are approached by producers on almost daily basis, like world worldwide or domestic, domestically. Uh, this is not the systematic work for us. We only deal with the specific uh, companies because there is a relationship obviously they they know where to look at they know how to get the films uh, to those festivals after which they gain uh, a bus and international uh, interest and we have workflow with them so it kind of it's 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 continuous systematic work and if we and, and with the amount of the films we have because it's 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 dozens of films on the yearly basis I think almost around 50 to 60 because we also have to feed our VOD platform and TV. So it's not just only about the, the quality, but also uh, quantity, like I said. Um, so, and this is the case of, of other distributors as well. It's, I mean, if, if, but most of the time, I mean, almost all the films which are uh, presented at the Town Berlin and Venice without the sales agent, uh, before the festival starts or even during, almost 100% are are acquired by some sales agents who then trying to sell it to to distributors uh, like us. And what was the second question? So sorry. Uh, that trends. was the distribution channels, uh, the trends, uh, percentage of revenues or viewers. Uh, 
it it's it it it's it's a static to be honest but it's it's growing in general um also the 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 ticket prices are growing so that that helps a bit helps a bit i think the, the previous years the the numbers the admissions uh were uh were lower uh, than the year before but the but the actual uh box office was 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 higher just because of the the reason um uh ticket prices and and if i just may take the, the word trends um uh, especially uh, in relation to to festivals they gonna try to be bigger and bigger and bigger in terms of uh in terms of the the films that are uh fantastically big when it comes to the images and the sound and the stars but but also what they keep which is great they are putting them in relation to to newcomers they don't they don't only show uh coppola film and lantimos film but they are also uh, inviting especially to the to the main competition it's not the major it is minor it is around one fourth of the 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 selection but but this but this means that that when they're put alongside it's it's gonna it's gonna throw them into the big game for sure and if the film is is successful then you know like uh son, son of soul you know the hungarian uh, by laszlo nemes he got offered like you know great great uh, uh opportunities in hollywood which he declined and he stayed in hungary and he kept doing what he does best uh, or largely um the the director of of uh, les miserables uh, he did his latest film les les indésirables which which is uh, interesting because the uh, um uh miserable was his was his debut film which is always a great pressure on these directors because okay they they also the expectations are super high and if the film is not good as the previous one like for example with i'm it's not i'm not saying it was not not bad film the second film of last one image the, the sunset i think was 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 marvelous film but it, it did not do as good as the the son of saul and so all of a sudden we haven't heard from from last one image I, i'm sure he's he's preparing something he's i think very uh very smart and and very intelligent director often the second one is the hardest no like Super in hardest. generally the third but, one but you have a directors other type of directors that they know exactly what they doing like ruben oslund that's a great example of the, the director that he's he's i mean he's doing art but at the same time it's calculated art for main competition it's in in Cannes. and this is not coming from me but this is coming from the words of ruben oslund himself i mean uh, recently i saw it small video ex 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 uh, clip from 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 there when he was in in dialogue with the uh, with the uh, thierry fremo the director the artistic director of can and basically also was 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 describing that okay the first film i don't know if it was selected for can or nothing but then he said that okay i want to do another film that will get into uh some section in in can because there are certain formulas if you want it or not that simply work in in for for certain type of festivals i'm not saying that something that works in Cannes works in Berlin, but it is like a whole but it worked uh, for him and he it got worked the for him and and he, he got like a uh, two pound euros and and uh, the triangle of sadness we didn't get and but we got all his previous films before ruben oslund was cool we discovered him uh, not nice. claiming it but but yeah but but it's 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 interesting example are there more audience questions yes uh wait a second Uh, you just mentioned the CAN uh, 2024 program that it was published recently. Have you already selected something from the program? Have you no. <laughs> no, because the the cool stuff is already it's it's by majors, right? Uh, the 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 stuff. I mean, there are a few that we are looking at. I'm not gonna say it now because our competitors would know that what we are planning to do in the next few minutes. Uh, yeah, but like I said, so. Uh, like the studios are like for example lantimos lantimos was 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 not always with a fox searchlight he was with a with the sales agents who were affordable i mean now it's not even affordable now it's 
impossible to to buy his uh uh, uh what's called uh, the, the new the, no no the, the the newest one the promises of promise something like that uh yeah so I, i'm sure you're all gonna love it soon uh when it's when it will get released uh so it's becoming more and more difficult to uh especially the you know the big names because if you're having a festival like uh, b2can like the obvious choice for the audiences is to to watch and, and and want to see the films that they they heard about and obviously the the media the the journalists create mainly buzz about the the names that their readers know so when they put it on the headlines they're not gonna do a headline of the unknown uh, director they're gonna do a headline on Lantimos or Coppola so if we're claiming that they were showing the best films from the Berlin, Venice and Cannes, they, you know, naturally expect these type of films, but we're kind of presenting in a different way. We, okay, we find, we get maybe one or two big name films, but then along that, those big names, we, we show them stuff like uh, Laszlo Nemesis, uh, Son of, Son of Shaul. So, so there's always like the uh, one or two films at the, at especially in, in Cannes that are, are great surprises that are made by directors who are, uh, unknown and from 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 one second they are just these festival uh superstars and then the the really the fight begins uh, between us and our competitors so what's the process you s go to the festival see the film first and then you decide to buy the rights and then you fight with some someone or <laughs> <laughs> I, I i don't want to keep using this 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 word <laughs> fight because it's it comes to negotiation that's a more <laughs> diplomatic uh, 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 term but yeah this is one of the ways or we discover the film before it's even made uh, uh, like I said uh, in Cannes I mean first couple of days even even days before the actual festival starts we will uh, be invited by uh, these sales companies and we would watch uh, promos we would be presented by uh, uh, agents that what are they have on slate um, and most of the time they even have a uh, prices um for those films that are it's 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 that that's very quite uh, uh funny because they the, the way they kind of create or or manufacture the price for us it usually comes from the the average uh yearly box office and they i don't know they they do some math and they sometimes they give us a ridiculous price and we know that you know this film is never going to make 100,000 admissions i mean we try to you know turn, you know prove them wrong that it, you know the reality is is much sober um yeah thank you yeah anyone else may i have a question uh basically you find a film then you talk to a sales agent and he talks to you and uh why is there this middle step of sales agent and how does it in practice looks like because i understand how it works in general but i don't quite understand the day day-to-day -day basis so and operations like what you do on a daily basis so let's imagine you are a, a film producer who is responsible for financing the film and then selling the film and your platform is the whole world so every country in the world could possibly uh buy the film so i think it's almost impossible for one person to uh approach each country or there is other way you just sell it to netflix as a producer and that's a easy way and you're never going to see it on the big screen because because of netflix uh, so that's one way the easy and fast money and then the other way is that you have a sales agent multiply by i don't know five people who are in charge of different territories so uh when it comes to us we're talking to people who are responsible for the central and um eastern europe then you have a uh, agents who have a responsible for you know states western europe and so on uh and then they know uh those regions those territories because those territories then have a um, multiple distributors uh, like us and then with this kind of environment then they can fight better price uh, and if you put all the prices together it's that's my guess I actually have no idea that that could be a bigger price if you only sell it 
for one uh, company like Netflix, if that makes sense. Yeah, there was another question. Hello. Hello. Might not be as related as to what you're doing right now, but I was wondering if you had any experience, advice or recommendation towards distributing short films and if you think there is a short film market at all. <laughs> an eternal question one million billion question uh, uh, I we, this, that that's not our field to be honest uh, they are festivals that, that, that dedicated to only um, short films obviously uh, Cannes, Venice and Berlin they have their own section dedicated for short films and prizes uh, that are presented at the you know final ceremony so that also gives a kind of a status or, or bus uh, to these shorts. And they kind of create the interest uh, for this, of these directors that, you know, what's, what's, their, what's their ambition, what's their, what's their feature idea. So that's great platform for uh, presenting the short at these big festivals to kind of gain uh, contacts and interest from uh, the producers, the financiers uh, who may take that on board. I think the... Uh, and and also and and the other maybe more interesting uh, um, kind of way of doing it is that that basically your short is uh, a pilot for 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 the feature. Um, so for example, uh, uh, Julie Ducorno, uh, the the director of um, uh, Titan or Raw, uh, director who won uh, the Palme d'Or, uh, her short film. It must have been at some film festivals was basically a, a short film for her uh, debut role so about about teenager who becomes the cannibal um, and that's that's I think a very good example how you kind of stick with one um, form and uh, and the subject and then you expand it and it, it, it serves almost like a like your uh, show reel basically so I mean, there are companies that are dedicated for uh, selling shorts. Uh, even they're approaching us because we, because they have a shorts of the directors that, you know, we we distribute a feature feature from these directors. So it's like Julie de Corno or Lajli or uh, was uh, so and and so on. There there are plenty of them, um, but financially. I, I, we don't see it. it's it's not our I'm, I'm sure there is there is a there is a market for it but we're not experts on this right uh, in terms of the time maybe well, okay one more question and yeah. okay so basically you go after the festivals and the salesperson then you distribute it there is something in the between so like localization of the film do you do also uh, the dubbing or just the subtitles? And when it comes, especially to dubbing, subtitles would be easy. Also, technically nowadays in the digital time, uh, what is the process for the quality assurance from the producer's side? Yeah, very good question. Uh, so mainly we do subtitles, Czech subtitles, which are okay for our uh, Slovak audiences. Um, and from time to time, we do um, dubbing as well for the films that are more family friendly oriented and have and we feel that they have a good uh, potential for the wider audience we're actually doing a dubbing at the moment we we at the berlin film festival uh, we acquired the french comedy uh, lucky winners which is which is uh, about everyday people who all of a sudden win the lottery tens of millions of euros and it turns their life and 180 degrees, uh, and it's a, it's a comedy in, in like a four like a short uh, stories. So so it's it's it's, it's a film for for everyone. That's that's how I consider this film. So it naturally uh, it's there is also a uh, it's key for the exhibitors, especially for from a smaller cities or villages or regions that they they almost automatically uh, uh, are interested in the films with the with the dubbing. Um, so when it comes to this film that I just mentioned, uh, not only has a potential as, as as a genre, but what with with the this this dubbing uh, 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 bonus uh, will be definitely scheduled in more cinemas uh, if it would be without without the dubbing. But that also comes for 
from you know fr uh, comes down to to the extra cost that we have to pay extra for we pay license and then we pay um, uh, for the material. So we have to create the, the files, the DCP. I don't want to bore you with the technical stuff, but different different files, which costs money as well for translator, uh, for the company that puts it all together. Um, so it's, it's it's a process, long and and I must say costly. So even I mean yeah I mean sometimes we even when we look at the film and it's it's a very uh, talky film. It's, it's a lot of dialogue and it's and, and I don't know if it's in in Arabic for example. And it's not like uh, you know mainstream friendly film. We know that we're gonna pay more for uh, subtitles, even more than we pay for for the license. Not even considering how we would wh how much we would pay for marketing and, and PR. Is there any last question from the audience? Two even. I mean, we started a bit later, so I hope it's. Fine. <laughs> hello, hello. Thank you. Uh, I have a question returning back to the question of public financing. How do you perceive uh, the state of state financing of the creative arts and movies in the Czech Republic? And where do you think are its shortfalls? And where do you think it can be improved, for example, by comparing it to other European states? Honestly, I have no idea. I mean, we got some funding from uh, from the Czech Film fund, but it's very rare to be honest um, for us specifically. I don't know why, but we get very rarely um, any funding. So um, I was very emotional about this um, topic, but I just stopped because it was just op occupying me too much and I didn't want to be controlled by this uh, topic. Uh, from time to time, we apply and if we get it, it's, it's great, but it's 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 not our area um, of interest. I mean, luckily, but but I mean, but obviously, to be fair, we're trying all the time to get some uh, funding, uh, uh, especially for the marketing and the PR, because you you can get you can have a great film that is you know it's, it's subtitles are made, the license is paid, but then it's you know it's unknown film, so it doesn't have this international uh, marketing and buzz, and you have to create. Was like the 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 story, the strategy, how to get step by step uh, to the audience what the film is about, and th that's usually most of the time this this money is is very um, helpful. So we, I mean, I don't, I, I can't really, uh, I'm, I can't really tell you. I mean, in in general, how it works. I mean, it's working quite ver well apparently because the the amount of films that are produced um, domestically. Uh, it's quite high, and they're doing very well uh, in terms of a uh, uh, box office. I think that the share. I might be wrong. I, I know the the French are doing the uh, especially good in compared to Hollywood films. It's almost like a fifty-fifty French films and and Hollywood. I think here it's 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 maybe not half, but something under. I think thirty or or forty percent. But 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 to put it on the on the wider perspective, there. As, as you probably noticed, the Czech films are not uh, super well, not as successful at all um, uh, uh, when it comes to film festivals. I mean, international, like especially Cannes, Venice, and Berlin. They're successful when it comes to uh, student films. So the FAMO uh, short films are uh, on the on the yearly basis are part of the uh, Cine Fondation, the the kind of a program that can. Uh, runs for the for the film students, so they have like a uh, a part where you show the film uh, for the for the jury, and then they give you some 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 money award. And but they have a very good department here at in Famu uh, uh, with Alexandra Slovakova and, and uh, sorry Hronsova, sorry uh, uh, who who knows who knows what what she does in relation to she knows to pick specific film for the specific festival uh, needs and she's doing it really well when it comes to Cannes and 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 Berlin so and also the yeah, the, the recent one was was very the, the one that won uh, that created this this controversy during uh, uh, Chesky Leo and it, I think that won the Oscar and but that's a great example that you know that Electra. there is a new generation Electra. Electra. there is a new generation of, of filmmakers who are very vibrant dynamic and 
coming with a new kind of uh, forms of 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 cinema. So I think I, I see the you know a very bright uh, uh, future because I mean at the moment the, the the older generation they're not there. Yeah, I mean it's been ages when there was a, a Czech film at the uh, at the uh, at the Cannes Film Festival. So um, there was a, a Painted Bird, uh, obviously uh, at Venice uh, by by. Uh, by Václav uh, Marho, uh, which was which is again good example of, of the Czech film that even got a really good uh, uh, sales agent. Uh, I think it was a, a celluloid, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, very established uh, um, um, French Iranian um, uh, sales agent that you know had it on slate several uh, Palme d'Or, Golden Bear uh, winners. Uh, but if you have a sales agent, that means that you will get a film. Uh, it, to s be seen internationally. Um, so yeah, I just went a bit too far from your question. Um, yeah, we had one more question here in the front. Hi. Uh, in Edison, you sometimes show also older movies. And I just wanted to ask if the process is easier, like to get the rights for the older movies. Uh, is it like different from getting the new ones? And yeah, how it works? <laughs> Thank you. It's it's both ways, but I mean, great that you touched on this uh, topic of showing uh, older films. Again, we're not originally original of doing this. There is a worldwide renaissance of of um, old films. There is, I mean. At the moment, we're living in the the era of uh, nostalgia and uh, nostalgia of of the generation that you know young generation haven't even experienced. They just feel that it's part of their identity through their I don't know family, parents, whoever. So I mean, sorry, just went too far. But coming back to your question, uh, it's a it's actually a good good uh, business model to uh, show older films. So we have a, a several kind of categories. What do we show? We buy uh, silent films from iconic films from from twenties uh, from silent era. We started. Uh, we just did experiment um, two two years ago with a Scandinavian Swedish um, uh, silent films that we just we just throw them. Here with a, with a, with a live music, with a contemporary electronic music, and it worked really, really well. So then we told ourselves that let's let's try get more films and offer more diversity. And we started buying films like um, uh, Lost World or Phantom of the Opera. Um, so iconic films like this, and we've been we've been having the ongoing um, um, uh, cycle like for almost uh, more than a year that we're showing on a regular basis the silent films with a contemporary um, uh, music and it's it's doing really well not from the beginning but we kind of build up uh, uh, our followers who really enjoyed those products and then there is a third uh, I mean the second second kind of a way we we show older films which are not uh, we, that we can't buy that are represented uh, 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 through the company. I mean, it's not a secret to say that it's represented by mainly one company, which is called uh, Park uh, Circus, uh, representing the 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 major uh, studios, uh, Hollywood studios, and then they they're basically middlemen, right? So they they give us a, a license to show it once or twice. I mean. As many, as as much as we pay, that as much as we could show the films, and and but those were packaging uh, with with the event, like a wider type of event. So um, I should mention the I don't know Scott Pilgrim event we had here. We had a uh, live music. We played the 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 game, uh, the the video game on the on the in the cinema after a screening. We have a, a tattoo artist who was a tattooing uh, uh, these images from the from the Scott Scott Pilgrim so but that was just the, like one off so it's only one like I don't I, I don't like this word but it's an exclusive uh, screening only one night but with a whole package of experience and and but here we're trying to do everything with the e experience uh, touch so it's either through through this cinema so we're adding kind of either I know 
educational kind of aspects. So there are also discussions or more entertainment aspects, like uh, with the with the music or just the purely um, um, uh, escapism. I mean, this is, again not from uh, uh, my my head, but it, this, is, this is a concept of the 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 economy of of experience, and that's what what I'm drawing draw, draw, drawing from. So, so yeah, so it's it's ideal when we when we own the rights because I mean Lahain was is, was a good example, and that's actually one of the first films that we started uh, that we 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 acquired and we kind of created this T-shirt Lahain, our original poster trailer. So we kind of it's almost like a re resurrecting the the new films and putting them into the the new clothes. Uh, I mean, the, 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 don't 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 tell to, don't say to anyone that the the new kind of a icon will be uh, um, Suspiria from Dario Argento, which we're planning to release um, in the summer. So you surely could expect some kind of a cool uh, event uh, made and manufactured by my cool colleagues. Oh, um, thank you. I think we're going to slowly wrap up, but um, before we uh, we will close, uh, I especially like the reference on uh, the day we are witnessing the nostalgia. I think all of us in the room were like, oh, it's happening. Uh, because we have so many young people here, um, I was wondering if we can close with um, perhaps some of your... Uh, uh, inspiration or some wisdom at the end from yourself about how young people in filmmaking or in arts management, uh, what would you, or young people in general, what advice would you give them? I think you're still young, you're very young, but uh, it still would be good to <laughs> to hear from you. I think, uh, first of all, do what you like and enjoy, and second of all, uh, stay naive as much as you can, really. I mean. I'm, I studied filmmaking and I'm not filmmaker because I was not naive during my studies. And naivety in this uh, industry is is necessarily, but, but also you have to find a balance between, okay, I mean, there is a there is a wall uh, in the in the further distance and it's extremely um, tough industry, but I really uh, envied my uh, classmates who really thought there's going to be a next, uh, Martin Scorsese or Spielberg after they uh, leave school because that that gave them the the drive to create during the school and 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 kind of uh, have a plan because I know how tough the reality is and that sort of discouraged me of making making films actually but I I really enjoy taking care of the films because it's I mean this is really profession that uh, it's 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 quite unknown um, and it's 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 hidden and when it's hidden I think that's and and it's smooth I think that's uh, that's a sign that you know I, I reckon we're doing a decent job but I'm talking about you I'm, I'm supposed to give you a, a, a motivation motivational uh, message um, yeah do what you like and 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 be romantic. I think. I think that's that's kind of you know. Even even here, we kind of creating a wild wild ideas, and if they turn out to be real, I think that's 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 an experience. Yeah, that's a beautiful last all ode to the naivety. I like that a lot. And yeah, thank you so much for answering to all our questions, for taking the time, and for host for hosting us in this amazing cinema. And um, yeah, have a drink afterwards. Support this great place. And, and please, a uh, warm welcome to a uh, wel welcome and clap to <laughs> to Dominic, please, at the end. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Really appreciate. Thanks to Clara and Ivan to putting this all together, all these incredible questions, and I hope to see you again, <laughs> maybe with a different guest, maybe, perhaps, with, with, un with one of you, perhaps. Or oh, with anyone, we would be happy <laughs> to be here. Thank you. Thank you.